Hello and welcome to Frugally Delicious. Today we have a pantry slash fridge clean out. So let's do it. Hey guys, welcome to Frugally Delicious. It is time to clean out the pantry and the refrigerator. These are a bunch of odds and ends things that have been in there. Some of them more recent. Um, some of the stuff has been in there a little while. Random, random, random. So with all of this, I'm going to try to make a bunch of meals. At this point, I don't know what I'm gonna make and I don't know how many meals I'm gonna make, but I'm gonna figure it out. So these are the items I'm gonna use. And of course, I will probably pull things from the fridge like mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, all the condiments, all the things, guys. <laughs> Just random things, pantry staples. I'm not gonna be using anything crazy, but let's see what we can make with this. I'm gonna make a pasta. I've actually been craving pasta. And so I was like, you know what? Pasta and tomatoes. I don't know why pasta and tomatoes. I'm not gonna make a sauce for this, but it'll be like a garlic butter kind of a sauce for this, not the actual traditional like spaghetti. So um, I'm gonna be using a little bit of spinach in this. I'm gonna be using some of these chopped mushrooms. I'm probably gonna use up what I can from these tomatoes. They're kind of going a little south. <laughs> so, and then I'll make a, like a sauce for it with that. And then I have this ridiculous amount of cheese in there that's been opened and needs to be used. And then of course, some fresh garlic. All right, I have my pasta cooking up over here. I did about one third cup dry pasta. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of saute up everything else. I'm gonna add some mushrooms in here. I really gotta use up the fresh stuff like the mushrooms and the spinach that I have and the tomatoes, which I wasn't able to salvage as much as I wanted to from those. They were a little too soft for me. Really, I was kind of just wanting some pasta and tomatoes. That's what I was craving, but I'm gonna add some other things to it because why not? All right, look at those beautiful mushrooms. Love it. Have my one clove of garlic. I'm gonna saute that up in here, release those flavors. Put a little pepper in there. Coat them with a little bit of salties. Gonna add some of my spinach. Cut it up just a little bit. I gotta get that spinach used up, folks. This was actually from a previous budget meal video I did and I had some spinach left. And then life got crazy and I wasn't able to make anything. But it is all good in the neighborhood. Last minute, I'm gonna add the tomatoes I have saved. I have saved your life, little tomatoes. Come with me if you want to live. Have my cooked pasta. I did save some of that water. This is gonna help everything come together well, I think. And saute this, get rid of some of those juices, and then I'm ready to eat. So that is it, and I will dig into this. I'm not gonna do my normal food rating on this video since it's kind of different than my normal videos. All right. I'm in the veggie mood today, so I decided I was going to make a Brussels sprouts and squash like cheesy bake. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and cut up all of my Brussels sprouts and just steam them all. I'm not gonna use them all for this meal, but I'll use some for this one. And then the rest of them, they're gonna need to be steamed anyway. So I just figured it'd be easiest to do it this way. Get it all done and just be done. Got my water getting close to boiling. Go ahead and put my wonderful fresh Brussels sprouts. Somebody actually gave these to me. I don't usually buy fresh Brussels sprouts. I actually only did that one other time for a video, but usually I just get the frozen stuff because it's just easy. So I do wanna just go ahead and take out all the seeds. You can leave yours in, of course, if you want to, but the best part to me is the outside rind. Someone also gifted me this squash. I haven't bought squash in a while, but she had several of these, so she very kindly gave me one. We're gonna put it to use in this budget challenge. I actually did this pantry clean out one other time, and I really enjoyed it because I felt like really accomplished and proud when I got done, because I had all this food that otherwise probably would have gone bad, because. I wasn't necessarily focused on, you know, eating those things. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make it a point to go through my freezer, fridge, and pantry 
every month and a half to two months or so and kind of just clear it out. I think it's just going to be best overall economically and, you know, for the money, for not wasting of food. I think I'm going to save this one for the stuffed meal I'm going to make. And then for this one, I think I'm going to use half for this meal. And then I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with that last one. My Brussels sprouts are actually almost done. They're still a little bit firm, which I think will be good because I can warm it up with other meals and it won't kind of become all mushy. So I'm going to put a little bit in this one, basically making enough for one serving. If you're new to my channel, you may or may not know, but I make budget meals for basically single servings since I just do this for myself. So if you're wondering why the servings are kind of small, that'd be why. Got my squash in there. Gonna put some salt. Gonna put some pepper. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of garlic powder. You can put fresh in there too if you want. And then I think just a little pinch or so of basil. Oh basil darling, where have you been? I got my single dish for the oven. I have put a little butter on it, just put a little grease or whatnot on there. This would be really good with some chopped onion if you have it. I will be using one of these slices of cheese that I needed to use up. I'm just kind of laying it across there. Yeah, it's fine. These are just like the crust of the bread. I had um, a meal or a dessert that I made and these were the crust that you're not supposed to use in it. And so I went ahead and dehydrated them in the oven and saved them. I'm just gonna use a little bit on top of this. And I'm really not gonna use all of this probably in this challenge, but I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> you could also use Ritz crackers or crackers or saltines on top too. I have my oven preset to 375 and I'm gonna cook this for about 20 to 25 minutes. Came out quite pretty, smells super delicious. And I'm looking forward to trying this. All right, guys, I got a fun idea for the melon. Somebody gave this to me also. And um, I saw an idea right after I got this online about making melon balls for beverages. So the lady I watched actually did watermelon, but I went online and you can do watermelon, cantaloupe, or like a honeydew melon. So I cut it in half, took out the seeds from the middle, and then... I'm going to cut it into about three relatively thick strips and you'll need a melon baller. If you don't have one of these, it's fine. You'll just need a knife and then you'll open up your melon, take off the rind, and then you can just cut it into cubes. You don't have to do that this way if you don't want to. And I have a pan that's got some parchment paper on it. I'm gonna put this in the freezer when I'm done. So I've already got my melons started and just keep cutting it until you've removed all of your shapes. I'm gonna put this in the freezer for a few hours, then you become frozen and then I'll put them in a Ziploc baggie. And then I can just pop three or four of these in a beverage and have a nice little fruit flavored beverage. Now, this is frugally delicious, so we frugally waste nothing. <laughs> so, with these extras here, I am going to use these in shakes, and I'm gonna keep um, a little bit of it out of the freezer, and I'm gonna just eat, eat it. <laughs> so, I'll just remove the rinds, and then cut these down into bite-sized pieces. All right, so I had one roll left, and it was from a previous budget meal video I did. So I needed to use it up, and then I also had these pickles left from that. If you're interested in that video, I'll leave a link below. But I really needed to use up these little, little bits, so I'm going to slice these up. And I'll be making a tuna sandwich out of it. No, this meal is nothing groundbreaking or spectacular, but I did have a roll. And I did have pickles, so, you know, naturally I thought, you know, it's a tuna sandwich kind of a day. All right, with some of the fruit that I had, which was the rest of the strawberries, I diced them up into small little pieces and then put them on this piece of paper so that I could kind of soak up some of the liquid that would be inside of there. I'm going to be making some granola bars. So I had some granola left, about two cups. 
And then my marshmallows, I cut up. I'll need about a half a cup of marshmallows. And then this was the amount that wouldn't fit in there. I'm gonna kinda just mix it in. And then I kinda wanted to show you what I did with my fruit cups. I ate one this morning for breakfast, basically. <laughs> a very light breakfast. And then the second one I'm just gonna eat. I just kinda wanted to show you what I was gonna do with the fruit cups that I had in the thumbnail. I have a tablespoon and a half of melted butter in here. Take my half a cup marshmallows. Uh, normally you'd wanna use small marshmallows, but I don't have that and that's not part of this challenge. It's basically kinda like making Rice Krispie treats, but without the Rice Krispies. It's gonna be the same thing kinda, but it'll be more like a granola bar. The same basic ingredients though that you would use in crispy treats. I'm gonna put just a splash of vanilla extract in there. And then about two teaspoons of honey. You can use any kind of sweetener you want or no sweetener at all. And I've been munching on that melon at night and I put some chili powder on it. It's super good like that. If you've never had that, you should try it. And I wouldn't recommend having your parchment paper over there ready to go so you can just pour this in there. You'll have to move a little bit fast. All right, I got my two cups of granola. I added my additional marshmallows that I wanted to be more of a whole pieces in there. Fruit pieces. I thought about putting the fruit cup in here too, but I thought that that might be a little too much for this. All right, get that stirred up really fast. Not fast, I mean super fast. Get it all nice and smoothed out. All right, and some homemade granola bars. How about that? Put this in the refrigerator for an hour or two until it's firm and set, and then you can cut it into squares or bars. All right, up next is a mushroom and spinach a quesadilla. I've never actually had a spinach and mushroom quesadilla, so I'm interested in trying it. We got the ingredients, we got to use it. I'll just be sauteing these with some butter. You can use oil, of course. And then I'm gonna put a little soy sauce on mine. You can also use Worcestershire sauce if you wanna use that instead. All right, now we're cooking. I just love my mushrooms cooked this way with a little soy sauce in there. I'm down for trying a little something different. All right, I'm gonna turn off my heat and then I have my spinach over here. I'm gonna save a little bit for one more meal, but I'm gonna put this in here. Just get it stirred up really fast. I don't want it to wilt really. So I'll just remove it from the heat and continue stirring. Got my one tortilla. Put my cheese on here. See how one slice does. Yeah, I'll make it work. Put my goodies on there. Bada bing and bada boom. Quesadilla be done soon. Ah, I'm a dork. It turned out quite glorious. It looks very, very good, I think. Nice and melty cheesies. All right, the next meal I decided to make is a pizza. Been craving pizza actually lately, so I thought what better way than to use up some of my tortillas they are gonna go bad. So I have preheated my oven to 375 and I'm gonna go ahead and cook this. I made this one other time on my video and I do want it to be a little bit more crisp than it was. So I'm gonna cook this for about 10 minutes and then check on it. And if I don't feel like it's firm enough, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in there a little longer. I want it crisp, y'all. Nice and crisp. All right, it did get a little crisp, but I'm gonna put some sauce on it. I really just don't want it to be soggy. Last time I made it, it wasn't as crisp as I wanted it to be. So I got my tomato sauce. I did open a can for this, so it wasn't in the original things I needed to get rid of, but I think these things are like 89 cents or something like that at the store. Got this at Kroger, it is a Kroger brand. Of course, you don't have to put tomato sauce on here. You could also put tomato paste. You could make your own tomato sauce by making fresh tomatoes and cooking it on the stove, pureeing it, adding seasonings. So if all you have is a tomato, of course you can just make your own. Just need tomatoes and spices. Mine is going to be a Brussels sprouts and spinach with cheese pizza. I do want these Brussels sprouts to be in smaller chunks. I mean, if you wanted to, you could just bloop, 
Throw it on there. Throw it on there and go on. That's what I always say. Just throw it and go. I actually have never said that before. <laughs> I'm just being silly. You know, you gotta have a little humor in your food making process. And I was going to use the sliced cheese that I actually need to get rid of before I opened a new container of cheese, but I think this is gonna spread and work a lot better, so. This is just so quick and easy too, I just love it. And just put a few pieces of spinach on the top here, make it look nice and pretty. And I think I'll cook this for another five minutes and then check on it, see if the cheese is melty and bubbly, and then I'll go from there. And I am cooking it again at 375. All right, and there she is. It smells really good actually, and then I decided to put the sauce on the side. I'll probably dip a little bit and then save some of this for another meal. Before I go on to the next meal, I do wanna say that I actually made something off screen. It was really simple, so that's why I didn't film it. It was basically the rest of that stuffing. And I opened the two cans of vegetables I had, the peas and the green beans, and I just took a little bit of those out and mixed it with the stuffing and kinda ate that like that. I love stuffing, so I'll eat it plain all the time by itself. So that was a meal and I didn't really feel like, you know, you wanted to see me film uh, putting water in, in stuffing mix, so I'll insert a picture, of course, so you can see that. This is the last little bit of pasta I had. So I have shells and then I have some macaroni noodles. There's not enough to fuss with doing them separately, so I'm just going to combine it all together and it'll be fun because there'll be two different kinds in there, right? I did salt my water. I do plan on using some of this salt water in the cheese sauce that I'm gonna make for this. And this is actually gonna be used with some other ingredients for the next three meals. For the cheese sauce I'm gonna make, I will use a little bit of milk. I do want mine to be like a really creamy sauce. You can just put all this inside of the macaroni noodles if you want and then make it that way. But I kinda wanna add it and make sure that it's kinda creamy first. Take a little bit of that pasta water and add that in there. And then this is the rest of that cheese. There's about three and a half slices here. Just go ahead and add those in. And then just a little splash of pepper. I got my sauce. It is a little bit on the liquidy side, which is fine with me. If you want to thicken yours up, you can just add flour to it or more cheese. Also, if you cook your noodles to like al dente, you can um, soak up some of the liquid from the cheese into the noodles. Mac and cheesy is done e. Mm. Soaked up the juice and now it's kind of got those little stringies in there from the cheesy cheese. I'm going to make a mac and cheese quesadilla. All right. And then we're gonna toast her up a little bit. Nice and toasty on both sides. And cheesy mac and cheese quesadilla is done. You can serve this with a side of like marinara sauce or with some salsa and sour cream. For the next meal, I'm going to make a stuffed squash. I've made stuffed squash in some other of my videos and not on the videos but I've never actually used macaroni and cheese inside of it. So I've actually really been craving like veggies and mac and cheese. So I thought this would be a great combination. You can cook this in the oven if you want to. So just stuff it and cook it in the oven probably at like 350 for 15, 20 minutes or until as done as you want your squash. You can sprinkle a little additional cheese on top. It'll make it nice and pretty and nice and melty looking. I'm going to cook this in the pan, so I'm just gonna cover this and then check on it every few minutes until the squash is as done as I want. Cheesy, squashy, pleasy. It's done. It came out very pretty. And I'm probably gonna put a little bit of salsa or maybe some hot sauce on top. Mm -hmm. I love these meals. They just come together so, so nicely. Quick and easy. This next meal is one that I've actually been craving since I started this <laughs> budget challenge for the pantry clean out. And um, I don't know where it came from, <laughs> but it's a mixture of pasta and veggies. <laughs> so I've been kind of craving that lately. 
I'm just gonna use the rest of my Brussels sprouts and I have my heat set at medium high. I actually got this idea from the last meal I did. It, um, when I was putting the macaroni and cheese inside of the squash, it kind of got to the pan and was like searing up and then I let it sear for a little while and then I tasted it. Let me tell you, fried mac and cheese is where it's at, folks. So this kind of morphed from being like more spaghetti, buttery, garlicky noodles with Brussels sprouts to having the macaroni and cheese pan seared in here. I am gonna just kind of stand here and keep an eye on it because I definitely don't want it to burn, but I do want them to get those little crispies in it from the cheese. I feel like these pantry cleanouts like really make me appreciate the food that I do have and not being wasteful because a lot of these things probably would have gone bad if I hadn't have like laser focused my attention and made sure that I used these up before opening anything new or making anything new or I don't know just kind of made me think about the food that I do have and just being very grateful for what I have you know some of these things you may not be craving but you have the food and you need to eat it so I don't know it just kind of makes me appreciate the food that I do have and when I can go out and splurge and buy things that make, you know, satisfy my cravings. And I love it. The Brussels sprouts are starting to get cheesy. Ooh. All right, folks, this is how we do it in the frugal kitchen. <laughs> Change of plans. This is actually going to be way too much for me to eat at one time. So I'm actually going to save part of this for the grand finale. I'm going to take some of this out and then leave the rest in there that I will eat for this meal. All right, saving that. I'm gonna add some milk in here. We'll see. I kinda want it to be a little bit more creamy, so that's why I'm adding the milk in there. You can add butter, you can add half and half, Shoot, you could probably even add some sour cream in there, guys. Maybe some cream cheese. Whatever you want to use to make it creamy. Okay, that definitely helped. Put a little bit more. And, of course, add salt and pepper if you want to. Oh, folks, she's still steamy. Mm -hmm. mm. It smells so good. All right, there it is. Done. Ready to eat. Bam. Well, folks... It's the end of the line. And if you've watched my videos enough times, you might know what I'm gonna make. It's a soup. We're gonna use all of the wonderful things that we have left. These are the two cans of veggies I opened and I used with the stuffing. That's the only thing I used these two for. So this, 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 this is gonna make a soup. Let's make a soup. I don't believe there's gonna be anything special about the soup, except it's gonna be homemade with all of the leftover ingredients that we're not gonna waste. I have two cups of water in here. I'm gonna add in my pasta sauce. It's gonna give it a nice tomato base. And then basically I'll just add in all of my ingredients. I have my squash in here. It's a lot of peas, but I don't know how else to use them and that can was gonna expire in the next month, so. So I had to use it. One of my favorite soups is the vegetable soup that you can get at the store and it's got the tomato base in it and it's got peas in it. And I just love that. It is one of my favorite soups. I thought it was gonna be too much, but actually this is probably a pretty good amount of veggie to water ratio. The only thing I'm not gonna add in is the pasta. I'm gonna put that in basically right before I serve it because otherwise it'll kind of puff up and absorb all of the juice, and I like a really saucy soup. And of course, I will be putting seasonings in this, salt, pepper, maybe some oregano, a little garlic powder, a little onion powder, splash and dash of salt. And I think that will do it for this soup. All right, folks, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There were a bunch of random meals. This video is a little bit different than most of my videos in the sense that I didn't do any of the food testing, but it's not really my normal videos of making food from leftovers in the pantry. So this is kind of how these videos will go, but 
it'll go back to normal on the next regularly scheduled program. These are the things that I have left. I have some breadcrumbs still left. I'm probably just gonna have to put these in things as I go. It's just too much. I'll put this in my soup that I'm gonna eat. I did get about three bowls of soup from that, so I'll put these in there, and it'll probably take up a good majority of those. And then I have two oranges, and I did see a recipe online where you could make candied orange peels or citrus peels. So I am going to try that, and if it comes out good, I might show that in a future video. So I will use both of these things up. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button, like, comment, share, and please come back next week. And as always, happy eating, my friends. That's a wrap, folks. That's a wrap.